forward to the cloud and I will share the screen. Um, here's the assignment so that we all know we're on the same page. Um, so the first, my main point is that you in our culture, in our sexist culture, people think of Aphrodite as the sex goddess. They think of her in terms of how she looks and especially whether uh, men are attracted to her and men are sexually aroused so that they can reproduce children, right? Um, but that's not what it's about at all. It's about everything she touches makes people want to be creative. And so you might want to start an environmental uh, NGO, but you have to have management skills, but you have to also be passionate. You're right. We have that Aphrodite, that desire to create. You might rather, you know, desire to support somebody else. You might, all those other skills uh, can be attached to not having to, to literally create a new, a new thing, a new baby, but lots of men refer to their, their companies they start as their baby. Um, in the academic world, we talk about conceiving of a paper, delivering a paper. We have the same words in English as you have for babies. So um, they're connected. It's just that it's gotten so gendered and that's so unhealthy. So you're going to go and think of a woman you know or yourself and talk about their life trajectory and um, why that would be like Aphrodite. So I'm going to shut this down so I can look at as many of you as possible. All right, uh, Madeline, take it away. All righty. Um, the person that I kind of chose that I kind of saw uh, this about her would be Nicki Minaj. Um, because her like she has a desire to like sing, I guess, and rap. Um, that's like her passion. And uh, she wants to be able to deliver her music to the world. Um, I kind of thought it kind of was kind of symbolized or kind of showed Aphrodite because uh, she kind of uses her sexuality and looks to kind of show her music to kind of produce it to the world, making people want to watch her. Um, one of the values that I saw that, that kind of related to Aphrodite was um, her children or her child. Um, she does have a child and she kind of hides her child from the public. And I think that's what kind of shows that she wants her child to have her own mind to be independent and not to base only her looks to show to the people. So that's what I chose. Okay. Um, Claire, and I, I'm only doing it according to the way they appear. So I don't forget anybody. Um, that's why I choose them the way they do. Okay, Claire, go ahead. <coughs> Um, I chose the public figure Lady Gaga because she's definitely known for her creative works and music. Um, she had a movie as well. And then her the fashion world too. She's known for being very bold. Um, she's often sexualized because of it. And maybe in like, like we read in modern day to get more views or like more fans, she does allow for this. But she's definitely over sexualized past that. She was accused of an affair with Bradley Cooper just because there was like professional chemistry, I would say, um, in their performances and in their film. And then she's active in politics. So I think I played on that, that she was um, past the just artificial, you know, just what people can see. She's active in politics and speaks for minority groups and things like that. So that's what I chose. Okay, um, Poppy. Can you get on Poppy or go ahead? Professor, I, I need some time. So I will tell if a few minutes later. Okay, a little bit later. Yep, I'll put you on hold. Uh, Lakin. I think I'm going to pass. 
okay um for the whole time okay uh rossi um hi so i've chosen san wanari and she is a Cambodian fashion designer who's, who has a mission to revive and promote Cambodian silk heritage. So Cambodian is known for the golden silk a long time ago, but due to civil war and stuff, all of that silk is gone. And so she, uh, so one, oh, Vanary is trying to revive and bring back life to the silk industry by creating her own boutique called Lotus Silk, and she has become the vision carrier for a lot of Cambodian silk farmers and tailors to be able to bring back um, to the world our silk industry and also she's creating the silk house which is like an educational museum to be able to tell the world um, what we are capable of. Very good. Um, all right, Louis. Yes, Professor, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, my example is a girl which I met during my volunteer time in Myanmar. Uh, you know, we volunteer at a relief center of Myanmar where Rovai play for people with serious infectious disease like HIV, disabled people and homeless people. You can imagine that this is a very dark place and the atmosphere is very kind of murky. But um, I met her here, she architect, um, but seeing she came to the center, everything has changed in a very positive way. Like she decorated all the world around the center, painting lovely scenes in the house of homeless people. So everyone kind of is inspired by her work of art uh, people look more energetic. Uh, they start to clean the center every week. They have the volunteer, um, sometimes even shared earth food. Um, I remember a poor man who came to ask her how drawing a poster to start his small business at a tailor or the way she communicate with all deaf lady through her painting. Uh, you know, I, I very imp impressive her that she communicate effectively with people around. She know a very, although she know a very little language of Myanmar and the local people also don't know English. Um, I think she had uh, a pretty uh, archetype in the way that she fall in love with the center. She used her talent of art to inspire people to direct their life in a very like positive and meaning ma meaning way, um, you know, I never thought that art had a shit magical magical power like that. So this is my example. That's great because the sensuous woman gets associated with sex, and yet sensuality, you know, sense of design, style, all that stuff, is something we need and something that. Uh, makes us better people, right? We're better when we can appreciate color, taste, design, style. It matters a lot. Um, it's not just uh, becoming sexually promiscuous. That's a terrible perversion. So I hope, I hope at least by the end of going through this section, you understand how perverted that is and how powerful it is too. Okay, May. Um, okay, Professor, uh, my example is um, a person from my country. Her name is Sohanye. Um, she is a model and also like Miss Universe Vietnam in 2018. Actually, um, usually I don't really pay attention to beauty pageant or kind of modeling like industry or something like that. But this girl, like she has a real influence and positive energy uh, in many ways. At first, like um, in terms of physical appearance, like she challenges the beauty standard of um, Vietnam because actually in my country, there is kind of a uh, beauty standard which has existed for a long time, kind of like um, the girl should have a long hair and a bright skin color and have like basically a lot of standard 
Um, but this girl, like she, she is from the minor ethnicity of Vietnam. She has like dark, um, uh, the dark color skin, and she, she is from like mountainous area, and she even has like short hair, like men. Like she break all of the beauty standard of Vietnam, and she proves that like every standard can be can be trained, kind of like that. And also one more thing, like. Um, in the past, when she was like 14 or 15, she was forced to marry, kind of like that, because like in some of the ethnic city, like minor ethnic city in Vietnam, it's like a, it's like a custom, like girls should marry at a, at the very young age to learn how to be a wife and something. But she kind of like said no, and she found all the way to like um, educate herself and also to go to school without like little like, financial resources. And later on, now when she became famous, um, she had like she had um, given a lot of money to education and to have another girls kind of like that. So I think that um, she is like attractive in term, in terms of physical appearance, but even in a very different way. It's not the way people expect girls to be. And also, um, she has done a lot of things to help other people in education. And I think it's a very great thing. Very good. I I know that last year there was a student from Sri Lanka that said her a woman who won the Mrs. Sri Lanka pageant was also really an activist. And I think there are going to be enough of them so that those whole beauty pageants might get flipped around. So the expectation will be social activism and things like that. So we'll have to see. But I think yeah, there have to be enough women to do it before it becomes an issue. Like it would be an issue if you don't do it, right? So that's exciting if there's enough of them that flip the beauty pageant stereotype on it on, around, that would be great. Um, Untari, are you next? Or did you? Yes, Professor. Okay. Yeah, um, I talk about my younger sister as an upper type of woman because she loves singing, dancing, and following all the trend of beauty. Even she once said to me that she wants to be a model in the future. Also, she's still young, but I can see how self-centered she is and that what makes me think that she is possessed by an upper type. Right, it's just a question of not getting used by men, right? She has yes. to be careful. Um, and, and using her talents as um, a means to bond between women and to promote a non-sexualized kind of sensuality. It's a very important mission, in yes. society, especially when the US keeps sending these awful signals. So that sounds great, Untari. Um, Rook Nine. Professor, I want to pass today. Okay. Um, Arifa? We're both here again. Okay, good. Yeah, we're, we're at Arifa. To talk to what, Arifa? Yeah, Professor, I want to talk. Professor, I want to talk about the uh, uh, first woman, uh, first uh, point woman in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, his, uh, her name is Robbie Balhi, uh, she was the first dairy Persian poet. Um, uh, yes, okay. Want to write poetry in Persian? Okay, Arif, yeah, okay. So you can come back to it. Uh, I'll come back to you, Arifa, if your connection went bad. What about you, Bondona? Professor, like, uh, in, I'll, I'll give an example of beauty patient, Miss uh, Pionka Chopra. Uh, she is... <coughs> Uh, she, uh, she is like uh, 
she, uh, she's very uh, fond of like we can compare with like goddess um, uh, effort, uh, effortity because she is like uh, she, is, she is beautiful she is a public figure so uh, she is uh, like inspirations for many women and she uh, know how to care for the people uh, uh, care for the people and yes he is like he can attract uh, like any man because she is so beautiful and like uh, you can say she's so uh, sexy so like uh, she uh, oh, yes we can compare him with uh, Aphrodite uh, okay I mean there there's the dark side of Aphrodite is that beautiful women use their beauty to manipulate men, to marry rich men, to show off, you know. So if they make money with their beauty and start an NGO, right? That's that's a totally different way that they deal with their beauty. But uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear you, Bondona, that you brought an example, I'm happy about that. Um, do you understand what I'm saying about what does she do with her fame and her fortune? Yeah, yes, professor. Okay. Yes, professor. Okay. Nahida, you got something? The professor, as everyone is uh, talking about the uh, public figure, uh, so I would like to talk about my mother, own mother. So okay. I can relate my mother uh, as uh, with the art of love, with Aphrodite's uh, creative power of love. Actually, my mother is very friendly with my, with me and share her life history, every life history with me. She's not only prioritized my physical appearance, she also looks at my, her child, children's intelligence, kindness, as well as help, helping us to modify those qualities within us. Whenever I am sick, I find her super conscious about me. She takes care, extra care, even she don't use to sleep at night to look after me. Actually, this uh, this love is just uh, I can relate with the creative power of love with Aphrodite. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, Asbina, professor, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, professor, uh, I'm sorry, I disconnected. Yes. That's oh, okay. So let's try Arifa. Are you connected, Arifa? Yes, professor. Okay, you want to finish? Uh, professor, yeah, I want to talk about uh, the first uh, Dari Persian poet. Um, his name is Rabi Balhi. Uh, in, uh, and uh, she, uh, her father, uh, teach him how to um, say poem, uh, poem in Persian. He was lived in during the, uh, he was lived in Sistan. Okay, we'll go to Asbina. Go ahead, Asbina. Hello, Professor. Go ahead. Um, professor, I actually want to talk about uh, Aphrodite's uh, dark side today. I, I'm, and I'm uh, the Arifa. Uh, Arifa, we'll come back to you, okay? We should go to Aspina right now and I'll I'll come back to you, don't worry. Okay, Aspina, go ahead. Uh, uh, I actually want to talk about the sides of Aphrodite. Yes, sir. And there is one girl, woman who is married and also has one child. She is recently becoming very popular in all social media platforms for cheating her husband and dating many men. So he, her, her husband is in army and she has many dark qualities that Aphrodite had, like she's jealous and faithful and she cheated on her husband and destroyed many lives and families. She is very pretty and attracted many men. She also had a relationship with many men just to fulfill her sexual desires. And she even lured like uh, many men who, also, who are also married because she was jealous of their pretty wives. She ruined so many families and her own married life. And she even told in a recent interview that she isn't guilty for what she did. 
good that's a good example she was also she is also very kind of bad tempered woman and took care of her daughter her, her, uh, well. uh, according to her mom she never cared about her daughter so she used to get angry a lot to her daughter and she even told that she was she was always jealous she gets jealous when she sees like the pretty woman who is prettier than her and she told that she wants to attract to many men just to let people know that she is very pretty okay very good there's a dark side again last year somebody brought an example of a woman who had married four popular politicians you know that everybody knows she just went like from one to the next oh i didn't even know that but anyway yeah okay jana tool do you have one Yes, Professor. Uh, when I did job that time, I had a senior ma'am. Uh, she completed her graduation with a fashion designing, and she interested in uh, to do uh, handcrafts. She makes dress uh, which are represent our culture in globally. She sell those uh, clothes to abroad, uh, so she represent our our country and she also uh, designed bridal dresses uh, and uh, and in our office she is very beautiful and all the men are attracted to her because of her beauty uh, uh, but uh, she uh, loves her family and uh, take care of her children also uh, and uh, also uh, she fulfill her uh, um, her passion so uh, uh, this, I think this is related to. Uh, oh, yeah, it definitely is. That's very good. Um, I said that sewing was my thing. And so when I go abroad, I always buy batik. I always, I'm a clothes horse. I have a lot of stuff. So I'll, I'll and I also buy pieces of material and get them made for dresser scarves for presents. That's kind of my weakness, so I get that. Um, Fahima. Have I called on you, Fahima, yet? Okay, so she might be cut off again. Um, all right, so that's the first round. So what are some of the takeaways? Just mainly that physical appreciation of physical beauty is a part of a complete life. And then um, you can also fall in love with an idea, fall in love with, um, there's lots of things where you fall in love with it and you create, right? I think you could fall in love with a vision of a better society and create. I think creating a, a high quality community is a kind of creative activity. So, <clears throat> so that's the bright side. Not only that, everybody needs that energy in order to really create their life. Um, and then it gets so perverted by patriarchy. And then the dark side is when women decide they're just gonna play to it and they're gonna make money and they're gonna be popular and they're gonna be powerful even if they aren't running, you know, politically powerful, they have this power over men in their sphere of influence. Um, they can be manipulative. They can be um, critical of other women, right? So when it's dark, it can be really dark. It's just that you have to know it's supposed to be uh, a shining light. And that in order to be really creative with your life, you absolutely have to have it. So that's that's a real dilemma for women. Um, okay, so let's start the second round, except uh, Margia, did you have an example of an Aphrodite woman you knew? Professor, I want to share now. Okay, good, Poppy. Go ahead. Professor, I have one of my friends, Beauty, and, uh, and she got a child marriage because her beauty. 
and now she uh, she has say uh, one baby also um, and her patient is uh, he want to finish her graduation and now <clears throat> still she is doing uh, her study also and she she also um, work in or um, like she make a school for orphan children and <clears throat> she uh, now she is a famous in our society also okay good so that's another um thing is that the husband can be the vision carrier right it's it's always though yes, good that's great i think that's great um and then i so there's that notion of the vision carrier right and then also um i wanted to say that a lot of uh, AUW women and lion women that like my classes, they uh, many of them are Artemis or Athena, and you can sort of tell why they're public, their think for themselves, all that stuff, but not everyone. Um, okay, Margia, that's fine. Um, so not, let's see, it's not all of the AUW and the, lion women are that type. Some of them really are more Aphrodite or Demeter or Hera. So women really have to respect each other for their orientation and just encourage it to be a positive thing and to, you know, point out not to each other not to go on the dark side with what it is that really inspires them. Okay, so let's do round two. And um, I guess I'll start with Margia. Did you have a comment on either either part of the assignment? Or would you rather pass for now? Okay. So let's do round two. And also you can type into the chat all the names that you're telling me because I can't hear them well enough. So go ahead and type. Okay, so Margia will pass for now. Okay, um, go ahead, Madeline. So is it just like a, just something that I thought of when I was reading or reading the poems? Yeah, a poem, a, an essay, a painting, uh, you know, some what we call works of art. Okay. Well, I was looking uh, through like works of art about Aphrodite. And like for me, I kind of only saw like photos or uh, works of art where the woman was like naked and her breasts were showing, which I didn't really like, obviously. But, um, but I kind of just like, saw that uh that they only kind of looked at the women for their body rather than their personality rather than like their desire for artists art and their desire for music and stuff like that which i didn't really uh like at that when i looked at it but yeah okay yeah well the other thing is i remember looking back the poems that i was assigned to read as an undergrad were all about men's attraction to women there weren't any about women and that's, I'm old. I never read a poem about rape or about abuse or about anything from a real woman's point of view, which is so amazing, right? And then you internalize that and it, it's really sick. <laughs> so my students have an advantage. There is a lot of stuff out there. You just have to find it. And it's really important that you do find it. But the, the culture has changed. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a developing country, you're more developed than was in the US when I was going to college. So hang in there, guys. Um, Elizabeth, sorry, I forgot to include you and Sam. Go ahead on the first round. Did you think about some person you knew? Sam, did you think?
Okay, you're muted. All right, we'll go to Claire first then. Okay, Claire, go ahead. Okay, I wanted to comment on something from the book. Um, it was on page 116 where it's the Alice Walker describes where her mother was inspired by nature, but instead of writing about it, her inspiration came from planting a garden. I thought that just the simple fact that our passions in life, whether they be, you know, small or large, whatever it says, my favorite part of it was she is involved in work her soul must have. So it's just, I also made a note that Aphrodite represents the spark. So I think it's just important to realize like small or large, whatever it is that is a passion for you is coming from Aphrodite. Right. Aphrodite was also the goddess of flowers. So yes, that's right. Cause they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Sam, are you there? Yes, we are. Sorry, we're having okay. like insane internet problems. Yeah. Right now. So okay, so both of you can do both parts. Okay. All right. Um, so for my woman that I decided to bring, um, I chose Halsey. She is a famous uh, American uh, music artist. Um, she is an openly bisexual celebrity. Um, and this kind of goes into my point in a little bit, but one thing that I really like about her is she refuses to be shamed about anything when it comes to her body or what she does in either her personal life her sex life or her career life. Like she's very um, independent and this is my own person and stuff, but she's, she's very beautiful, very caring and things like that. She's pregnant right now. Um, but the reason why I wanted to focus on her was someone who was so proud of her um, like sex life or whatever is because my point that I wanted to ask or like kind of bring up, I think for um, the class was about the dark side of Aphrodite, how I can see in, you know, you know, back in the past, sorry, <laughs> back in the past, um, that a woman who was a very sexual person was considered a bad thing or women that use their body to control men or control society. But I think that that's changing. And so like now we have movements that are like sex work is real work, like women who are strippers or prostitutes, whatever they do, you know, they, they, they do use their body for money and control or whatever. But I think it's a, it can be considered a dark side, but I think there's also some benefit that can get out, you can get out of it. But I don't know. I just feel like in the in times that are changing, like right now, that's all changing. So maybe it won't become the dark side of Aphrodite. It'll become like the just the other side. Like you got two options with Aphrodite, and one of them could be owning your own, owning your body, and owning yourself, which is what I really like. So yeah, the trouble is you have to have a lot of privilege in order not to pay a big price. Yeah. No, there's definitely that's, still a lot of stuff for that. Yeah. She, you know, she has to remember. If she's sending that signal, a lot of women are really going to suffer. So, you know, it's not just about her. So that's it's definitely that's, a lot of things that need to change in society for that to become a normal thing. But I don't right. know. <laughs> I mean, I remember when my parents said, you don't have to think about money, you know, think about what you want. Well, you have to have a lot of privilege, you know, to be able to say that. And so, you know, I don't tell my students, you don't have to think about money. Uh, you have to figure out how to balance, right? What you're really mm -hmm. passionate about with having to make a living. So that's just one thing. Um, okay, Liz, what have you got? So I brought some artwork and also an artist that I wanted to share. So let me pull it up. This first piece is by Adelaide, and I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce her last name because it's like German or something, and there's two of them. All I know is her name is Adelaide, and this there there is a little bit of nudity warning, but it, this piece okay. is just of a woman looking off. But the reason that I chose it was because we talked about in philosophy of art how usually when men paint women, they paint women as the object or 
what people should be focusing on and usually the woman is looking out at the viewer but in this she's looking off to the side as if she's enjoying her own presence or the presence of somebody else not the viewer so that's why i chose that it's a very it gives me very aphrodite vibes the fact that she's focusing on her own like sexuality and her own beauty versus that of the view the viewer so and the next artist i want to talk about is suzanne valadon She's a French artist who actually received no formal training. She just kind of taught herself because she wanted to paint women. So this one, this piece by her is called The Abandoned Doll. And so it's of a naked woman, but it's not in a sexual context at all. In fact, she looks like she's more in pain or she's sick or something, but she's getting help from another woman. So it's kind of showing how women support each other and it doesn't have to be sexual at all. And then this other piece is a little bit of the same thing. It's called The Future Revealed. And there's another naked woman. That seems to be a theme, but it's again, not sexual. And the woman is not looking at the viewer. She's focusing on the woman who's like reading her tarot cards. So I just liked these pieces because they're not focusing on the woman as a sexual object. They're focusing on how the woman herself has her own sexuality and is free to express that. Well, it might have been the second one sounds like the woman is caring for the other one because patriarchy has hurt her, right? That's what I'm assuming. Women, yeah, women get hurt. And so they need to take care of each other rather than compete for the male gaze, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the opposite. Um, yeah, okay, good. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, Poppy, did you say something on this part of the assignment? Is there something more you wanted to say? Did you bring a work of art or something? Okay, um, I'll call on you again. Um, Lakin? I'm gonna pass. Okay, uh, what about Louis. Yes, Professor, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, I produced uh, an example of a book author that she's famous with, with graphic novel gender, like telling story by the painting, by her painting. Like, is it a very new gender in Vietnam? Like in this gender, she published a book about sexual abuse among adolescents. You know, this is a topic that's not easy for art, especially for a picture book. But she's very successful with this book. Uh, she used many metaphors in her picture to tell story. Um, she does not want to tell a story that's like Deep, deeply dwell in the victim pain or condemning abuser or raising awareness of the reader. She put herself in the position of a victim. The pain was so great and like terrible. And she noticed the children were too young to understand what she going on for them. So that's why she went to like uh, put her at her act, at her, um, like put her at her main actor in the, the painting and show the student how to like get away from their past. So I think it's a, it's a very impact, encouraged for me. Good, that's great. How you can take Professor. your- Yeah. Uh, may I like, like uh, see another example? Sure, Bondona, more power oh. to you, go ahead. Okay, like <clears throat> there is a book Ash Ashwamedi. It's like a, a Gujarat uh, Gujarati, like uh, written by Chinu Modi. Uh, it's a three act play. So he is depicting a picture of a lady. Yeah, her name is Mohini. Uh, her name is Mohini, and like she is married to a king. Uh, called, uh, named Vitra Chisin, and she is like, uh, uh, she means like what she felt uh, like fulfill her sexual desire at the age of 16. Uh, it not a man or not a human being, but it was with a horse. She was riding a horse and she uh, like she fulfill her sexual desire and 
and she was so attracted to like uh, i mean sexually attracted and she like continuously she was playing uh, like uh, she she wanted to ride horse and like once uh, 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 the king and the soldier of the area knew that uh, she was feeling her sexual desire so like uh, and she was uh, that time uh, when she knew that everybody knew about her uh the thing she was doing so she felt guilt, uh, guilt about her deed and she took a sword and she killed herself and yeah. okay so you have to figure out what's the message what's the signal is it that uh, we uh, uh, so, no, the message was that she, she was sexually attracted and she fulfilled her desire with the horse and like when uh, she knew that everybody uh, uh, knew about her and she felt guilty about her and she like uh, suicide herself and she killed herself well, yeah the, the dark side of like whatever right myths aren't supposed to be taken literally they're supposed to be telling you something that you're supposed to know but uh i'll get that's okay we, you can write about that in your post uh, but thanks. Uh, the reason I let Bondona intervene was she didn't talk last time. And so I just want to make sure everybody who hasn't talked before gets right in there. So, okay, so now we're at May. Um, okay, Professor, like the Afro Aphrodite archetype made me think of um, one poem in my country. Um, my whole son Huang, she is also one of the uh, greatest like female poet in my country. The name of the poem, if translated into English, it would be the floating cake. Like um, basically it's a cake in Vietnam, which is like very white and like very delicious, kind of like that. It's a metaphor. Um, so this poem has just four sentences, but it speaks a lot of things. Uh, firstly, it depicts the beauty of a woman at both physical and soul level. Like um, for the for the author, for the poet, woman in the old society has um, a very like unique beauty, and also they are very like pure and also very beautiful at so many levels, kind of like that. It's like the cake, um, both outside and inside, and also. Um, it talks about how the old society like observe the role of woman, like because the last two sentences talk about like um, the society, like they just consider woman as the reproducer and also like the housewife and everything. And also the life of woman was like depending a lot on men, kind of like that. Um, but I personally believe that like um, woman at any times like are very talented and have a lot of things to contribute in both in both like public and also private spheres. Like even the author of this poem, like Ho Sun Hyung, like I said before, she lived in like the 17th century in a very patriarchy context, but she she is like she's very good at like composing like and writing poet kind of like that. And until now, like her poems are taught in our school to educate like um, every student to know like um, how women were living in the old society, how women were treated unfairly and we need to do something different. So yeah, that's what my thought. Good, very good. Um, Untari. Professor, I'll pause. Okay, um, Arifa. Do you yeah, have professor. Yeah, professor, I wanna talk about uh, one singer. Uh, his name is, uh, her name is Ariana Said. She is a famous singer in here. Um, uh, she always, uh, she is very pretty and she loves to have a very bo big body, but the men's always, commenting him negative negative in a negative way but uh, she doesn't care always uh, she's shining like a star and always uh, she singing in life uh, she has a good sound also but most of the uh, men uh, think like 
she is not a good woman because uh, her body, but she never cared. But the, he trying her best to uh, be a, a, a best uh, singer. And now all the people, the, uh, mostly the women, like, <laughs> like him and follow him. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sure that, that everyone will get into all sorts of heated debates about how women should or sh shouldn't use their beauty for this or that. So you're just in on the debate, I'm sure. Um, Nahida, what have you got? Have you got something, Nahida? Yes, Professor. Uh, actually, I know. Uh, Professor, can you hear me? Yeah, it goes on and off though. Nahida, now it's off. Now it's muted. Okay, I'll move on, but I'll come back to you. Asbina, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have an example? Uh, uh, I will pass it in for today. Okay. Um, Fahima. She might have electricity issues. I know she does. Um, okay. So the, the women who are have these issues, I can tell you, you probably can figure it out, but they're overcoming incredible obstacles and I admire them so much. And I'm sure they would have, well, they have great things to say in their in their posts. So maybe I'll bring it up. Um, okay, Rosie, go ahead. Sir? Professor, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay. Uh, so I would like to talk about a girl. It's called, she's called Tosliman Nasrin in Bangladesh. Uh, from Bangladesh. And she is a Bangladesh, Bangladeshi sweetest writer and physician, feminist, secular humanist, and activist. She's known for her uh, writing on women's oppression and criticism of religion. In her writing, her subject matter became increasingly sexual and her condemnation of men was unrelenting. unrelenting. Actually, it was uh, exactly opposite characters of Aphrodite as she was writing against men. So uh, though she used to uh, fight for human rights, her intensive writing against social injustice, bitter uh, and blaming to men and religion uh, and uh, blaming to patriarchy intensively uh, show her short temper. So actually uh, uh, I appreciate her for her writing for women, but uh, she could represent her writing through a go -to way so that people could accept her. So we should look at, uh, we look at, we should uh, look at the, we should, uh, so when we are going to write anything or so when we are going to express our opinion, so we can, uh, we can do it in a good manners. We can learn it from her lifestyle. Okay, that the interesting thing there is the anger reminds me of, of Artemis, right? And then um, also we have this issue of secular humanist anti-religion. So I'm not going to talk about that a lot because the goddesses is a sort of an alternative not to have to talk about the religion you grew up in. But I, I do teach another class where we compare the different religions that you grew up in. That's a different topic. But um, you don't have to split uh, humanism from religion. Uh, that's a false dichotomy. But I, I don't think I'll get into that right now. Um, uh, let's see. Rossi, your turn. Hi. I thought you um, you called my name and I didn't hear it earlier. Well, oh, I did, but then Nahida came back in. So go ahead, Rossi. Um, so I have an example of a portrait from a series called Flower by Nia Paul, and she is a Cambodian 
photographer and in this portrait she has a depiction of all the Cambodian stereotypes of women being objectified as a sexual object all in one so in this portrait there are image uh, there are flowers um white linen and stains all trying to tell people that this stereotype of women being objectified still exists and we shouldn't erase it from our history but reminds people that it is still happening daily and people need to acknowledge it and do something about it and not just it go every day and also there is a traditional proverb cambodian proverb saying that men are like gold women are like white cloth which implies about sexual inequality because gold doesn't um fade away or anything its value is still there regardless of what happens to it whereas a white cloth if say you have sex before marriage or if something is going to happen the white cloth is stained and you have no more value and what so paul is trying to do is to make people realize that women are worth more than just being sexual objects right that's good you know when they lose their virginity they're a fallen woman you know that that's even if they do they lose it in marriage right it's like you're not the same that that's really bad bad news um hard on women okay margia do you have something on this part okay let me know if you do in the chat. Uh, Jana Tool, you have something? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, I read uh, I read an article. Um, uh, in this article, a, a writer want to show the true fact of our society. Like uh, uh, when uh, when we see uh, when we want to see a song, we uh, want a singer uh, very attractive. Uh, we we are not uh, if we are not judge about her voice. We always um, in our society now we always want uh, who who is attractive attractive and also uh, it's not only for a singer it, it's also in media or other platform uh, or in a job side uh, 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 the real uh, creative uh, women are not valued uh, only a, a beautiful uh, face uh, valued so um, uh, in in this situation uh, the writer want to uh, say that uh, we should uh, uh, value the we, we should uh, judge the uh, uh, idea the knowledge we should not uh, think about only beautiful face uh, so yeah okay good um very good okay so now is there anybody else who wants to talk in the big group because i'm going to put you in small groups now it's it's time the timing is good um so i'm just going to throw you into the small groups uh, and then I'm going to check them and maybe move a couple people. Um, and then if, if your group is sort of fading and you still have some time left, one person should come to me and let me know. And then I'll stuff somebody else in that group. Is that okay? So you have 15 minutes. I'll pause. Okay. So, um, you have your posts that are due on Friday. Um, I think the AUW, it's noon on Friday and the Lion, it's, no, Lion, it's, yeah, Lion, it's 6 p.m. Because it's Monday morning in Bangladesh and it's Sunday night. So, um, so Friday at noon for AUW, Friday, 6 p.m. for uh, Lion. Now, um, it looks like you can also, after you're done, you know, at the end of the post, just tell me what's working, what's not. I think the way I did it this week is better just because so many people have internet issues. Um, but I, I can't, it's just too hard for me to imagine this class 
doing it asynchronous, asynchronously, right, with just me talking, because all of you do contribute a lot. Um, so I do think it should be um, hands on where you can hear the other students and they get excited and they have things to offer and they understand. And so you can learn a lot from each other. Um, so I think it's just internet issues. That's something of a problem. Also that people don't have enough electricity to have the video. So that's harder, but um, anyway. So I wanted to emphasize uh, a couple points that have sort of been coming up. And when it comes to Aphrodite, because women have been sexualized, this can be a source of great pain for women. They can really uh, use their sexuality to uh, harm other women because it's, uh, it's been so turned into uh, the male gaze. So uh, I do want you to be careful about that and to notice how that can happen. Um, I also, it's really important for me that you know sensuality is a good thing. It's sacred. We all need to be um, exposed to, to put ourselves in environments. They don't have to be expensive. You don't have to be wealthy, but just to have a sense of style to have a sense of order, beauty, color, design. So when um, one of the students talked about the textile industry, right, in Cambodia, the silk, that the, th the things that really strike me about that is that human beings do not live by bread alone. Every country, no matter how poor they are, they have, uh, they design their uh, bowls, what they eat out of, they can, uh, it has a sense of design. It might have pictures on it related to the society, to the society stories, to the folklore, or they have, uh, I know in Indonesia, different areas of the country had different kinds of batik, different colors, different styles. So there's so much in there that's really important for a high quality of life. The Greeks did not want emotions to be repressed. Um, and when they are repressed, women tend to suffer. So I would say women suffer with repressed emotions because when men repress their sexuality, then they blame women. Women are evil because they're tempting me. Well, they're tempting you because you're, you're repressed. You need to have other outlets of just uh, sight, hearing, music, you need other sensuous outlets. Women, you know, women's bodies are not the only outlet, uh, but women also are in trouble if they get too promiscuous. So, you know, there's trouble if there's too much repression, there's trouble if there isn't enough. And so women tend to suffer the most from, from pretty much anything. And so that's another reason why I like AUW and why I wanted to start a woman's group at uh, Lion. It could be just a space where women can be comfortable and they can be comfortable just being themselves. They can be comfortable being uh, sexual or just feeling comfortable in their own bodies and then also talking about whatever they wanna talk about and not talking about men, <laughs> right? Talking about things that are that they're passionate about other than men. Um, but AUW does provide that. So, um, so some of the women at AUW really are, are artistic. And when I was there, they had a dance. They had a night where uh, groups of women had um, auditioned to do dances and some of them did some really contemporary dances some of them did traditional dances from their countries so there was that <clears throat> there was the performance of um, a play by judy chicago called vagina dialogues where some of the women just wanted to have the freedom to talk about vaginas which is fine as long as 
no other women are forced to come, right? So women just get to choose pretty much uh, what they want to do about the fact that they're women, but everything is affirmed and everyone wants you to develop to the highest level that you can get at. Um, so I wanted to read a couple excerpts that um, I wanted to point out to you. Another, it is obvious to me, right? It's shameful in a way that all the examples are almost all of them are white American women. But I started reading this stuff 32 years ago. So that's pretty much all there was. And that was way more than there had been before. So things are really changing and they're really changing fast or I'm that much older than you so that I can tell you it's really different than it was 50, 50 years ago. Uh, 50 years is a long time. So you're right in the middle of a huge shift and you're on the lucky side of it. Uh, so I hope you take advantage of it. Um, but a couple things here where, where um, one of the quotes is that uh, women uh, have provided us moments of epiphany or vision. We can feel rising from our depths a quality that transcends the gender polarities that are so destructive. They've dug the goddess out of the ruins and cleansed the debris from her face, casting aside the woman fearing mask that have obscured her beauty, her power, and her beneficence. Um, together, okay. Then Sarah Ruddick's book, she took excerpts from lots of different women, which is what I'm going to do when I put all your readings together so that you can see that this is all parts of a whole. Um, to create that which is uniquely your own in response to and in harmony with that which is around you uh, is an offering, a gift. Uh, that's the only justification of my existence that I can conceive. So sometimes people think that if a woman sits in her studio for 10 hours and tries to create something that she's being narcissistic, but um, Shapiro, Miriam Shapiro is pointing out that in order to create something that really does transcend patriarchy, you really have to spend a lot of time alone or just with other women so you can get that voice of the man uh, judging you or looking at you or whatever out of your head and you can start to really be creative about women's um, powers. And I think, again, a lot of you last time, the last class said that your fathers are encouraging you. So if you think about the connection between a woman's relationship to her father, which is most evident in the Athena because Athena is going out into the realm of men, but also the effect of her relationships to her mother and father and how she deals with her sexuality. Um, that's all important to if a, um, another uh, quote I wanted to say was if she trying to make a statement of her own, um, take responsibility for her life. Let's see, what was I? It was, uh, oh well. Um, poetry was a discipline grounded in experience that drew its life and worth from a source much greater than oneself. That's when you are really creating something, you get outside of yourself. You're just totally dedicated to it, totally lost in it, but it can be an organization, it can be a community, and it can be some music. Um, so you have to, when you're in the midst of that, you have to be able to do it really with a free mind. And that's, that's hard. Um, let's see. She has to, it has to, ugh, I'm trying to find the uh, Virginia Woolf quote. But anyway, so those were just some of the ones that I, I pointed out. And then I want you to, to be able to recognize that when I start putting together your excerpts, 
they will very much be in addition to this book, right? That my book needs another chapter on each of these because it needs what you all are offering. Um, and here we go. Finally, I found it. Um, Virginia Woolf is questioning who gets to say what great art is, right? So far, great art has always been defined by, by men. Um, whether, quote, whether this is literature or whether it's not literature, I will not presume to say, but that it explains much and it tells much. The greatness of literature is not only in the great writers, who gets to define those, the good writers, what the heck does that mean? It's also in that which explains much and tells much, the soil from which greater writers emerge. And that's what I think um, that, you know, I think you are great writers, but that's just because it explains much and it tells much. In other words, you're bringing into consciousness something that hasn't been there. And that's what great writing should do. So um, it shouldn't be, you know, that you can fiddle with words or all these other criteria that I don't really think are that important. If it can blow people's minds, if it can make them more aware of what they're in the middle of, of humanity, of human nature, of human passions, then it's great writing. Um, also, if we put it all together into this higher level of consciousness, um, this is the soil from which greater writers burgeon. So the next, the, the women your age would read it and they'd be inspired to do something even more with their lives. So by you put, by me putting this together um, is really being like the um, vision carrier, right? So you can be a vision carrier for your sisters, uh, your um, spiritual sisters, your peers, your women peers in um, today, the, in this day and age. And especially you are um, leaders because you're going to college, right? As soon as you go to college in America or anywhere, there are certain responsibilities that you ought to be aware of, right? That you are the vision carrier, that you are the ones that are breaking new ground or leading the society forward. And um, in general, uh, reactionary behavior, fear of change is, is a negative influence in history in culture, in a society, and it's always hard on women. So again, women get blamed for uh, making the society degenerate. And I've had, I have students at Lyon that send me conservative posts. And, you know, I'm glad that they don't, they aren't aware of the fact that I might not agree. It's okay, right? Because I really want them to express what they think. And, but it is amazing to me at this point in history, how many Americans are anti-science. They don't accept climate change. They don't accept um, that we're having a pandemic. They don't accept the social distancing. They, um, but what goes along with that is this fear of the future and also it almost, it really is closely connected with not liking feminism, not liking the change in women's position in society. So all of you will have to deal with a lot of reactionary behavior. And so I think it is important to make sure and model that what you really care about isn't promiscuity, it's women being able to be creative. And I guess I will just speak to one thing that I know that I've seen the story of is that um, Martha Nussbaum was a very, very prominent public intellectual. And she, you know, 
advocated sleeping around. She said, you know, if a woman's in grad school, a very male dominated grad school, she ought to calculate who she sleeps with to make sure it doesn't bother her too much. And, you know, I, when I read that, I thought you're in a position of privilege because so many other women, if they act like that, they're going to be in trouble because any false move and they're going to uh, lose status in grad school, they'll, you know, somebody, they, they, it's just if a graduate professor is attracted to them, he can blackball them if they don't sleep with them. They can sleep with them and then they get blackballed again. So I mean, the power dynamic is terrible. Um, but what happened is Martha Nussbaum got into um, international human women's rights and capability development, which is fine. I liked her stuff. I wrote about it. And now there's a post-colonial movement where they're against Martha Nussbaum and her capabilities, not because of the theory, but because women would go and try to, you know, develop other women and they'd start out with birth control, abortion, you know, sexual issues. And the, the women there were much more interested in, in telling those Western women, don't let US corporations exploit us for our labor. Don't let US corporations bribe our politicians and then, you know, are allowed to destroy our environment or exploit our people. They're really interested in economic rights, right? And so there's there's real friction there. So once again, women are pawns in a man's game. And so it's so complicated. So it is funny because I publish stuff supporting Martha Nussbaum. And then, you know, 10, 20 years later, it comes out, no, no. Uh, and that wasn't what I meant. It wasn't how I lived. But just so just to let you know, you know, the situation is very dynamic. Um, and there's setbacks and there's pushes forward. And try to be conscientious, get your priorities straight. But um, it will, the, the trajectory of history, right? It will keep going. And I really, it's really exciting to see how many of you know women who are achieving in all these areas so that there's enough of a critical mass so you can start self-consciously doing it. And that's where I'm going to take your excerpts and just be part of that process of helping everyone become more self-consciously aware of this, these leaps forward that women are making. Um, so on next, I will post the attachments and the assignments for next week. So I hope by now, you know, you have to scroll down. Uh, next week, we're gonna do Hera, the wife, and Demeter, the mother. Um, so, so far, Artemis and Athena were the independent women. Aphrodite is the one who's just supposed to be the chemistry, but because she's so high powered, she's, you know, there's a lot of disagreements about her. Uh, Hera and Demeter are both dependent because their identity is caught up with playing these roles. Um, anyway, so uh, Rossi, sorry, I, <laughs> go ahead, Rossi. Did you raise your hand? Um, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, people can raise their hand. I mean, I know I talk a lot, but if there's a hand there, you might be able to get my attention. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Anybody else want to raise their hand? We have like two minutes. Um, okay. Not yet, Professor. Okay. So uh, anyway, I have office hours, the same hours. Um, I'm going to try to get the American students together tomorrow at eight o'clock, but I still haven't confirmed that. So please come to office hours if you want. Um, we are required to have one hour 
in-person classes. And so just for this week, I'm going to make it that extra hour online. And because the students, you know, started late, and I think that's a good idea. But anyway, don't, if you are at AUW, don't worry, there's not, you're not going to be interrupting. Um, and then if there's anybody for whom these hours are consistently not working and they really want to get a hold of me, there's no problem. Just go by appointment. Um, I'm really hoping by next uh, Saturday, I hope everyone will have all the posts in or they will have contacted me in and I will know exactly why they don't. It's not because you're lazy. I know that. It could be because of your electricity. I just need to confirm it. So um, so we're just on the same page. That's it. That's the only reason. I do not want my class to cause you any stress. I don't want you to be thinking about it that way. Think about having a free mind. Think about what you'd like to contribute. Think about being inspired by the other women in the class and their examples, okay? That's that's what I want. Um, all right, it's, it's time. Yeah, thank you, Professor.